Hello and welcome to another Total Education Centre lecture. Today we're going to talk about Lost in Translation. My name is Bruce Pattinson and again I'm here to you today to help you with your studies. When we think about Lost in Translation we probably should start by thinking about Sofia Coppola and the reasons for making the film in the first place. Sofia Coppola of course comes from a famous movie making family. Her father Francis Ford Coppola was an extremely successful filmmaker with movies such as The Godfather. He's an icon in many many film terms and many film areas and, and certainly highly successful and highly regarded. Coppola began starring in films of her own at a very small age and she in fact appears in The Godfather as a baby. More importantly though, as she developed and grew up, she in, digested a lot of cinema and a lot of techniques and we can see that in Lost in Translation and that's probably what's most important for us. Coppola not only takes from other films and, and morphs and makes allusions to many films in Lost in, Lo Lost in Translation but she also certainly has cinematic techniques of her own and you should look at the camera work and the filming and the way the film's put together and I think that's extremely important and I'll talk about that later because the techniques in this film are very very clever and well organized and it leads you through the relationship between the two main characters very clearly and very completely. What else we can look at here is it's very important that if you've got the video or the CD or wherever you get it from there's a very small interview at the end of that in the special features. It's an interview with Coppola and Bill Murray and they talk about the making of the movie and the reasons for that and it's, it's probably very important that you watch that and learn from that because they reveal many of the secrets of the film and why they did things and reasons and purpose and, and other very very interesting things and it's only a very short 10 minute interview with those two very very important so if we're here today to talk about context of the film of course we need to probably talk about Japan most of the movies filmed in Tokyo and a little bit in Kyoto and so the Japanese culture is portrayed in the film in a variety of ways and a lot of the critics have criti both criticized and praised Coppola's portrayal of Japan in the film and the Japanese people. Some say she mocks them especially in the scenes with the language and others say she criticizes the mo modernity of Japan in favor of the cultural um, highs of its historical past such as the Ikebana, um, the Shinto ceremonies, the shrines all those sorts of things and you need to make up decisions of your own about those things and, and what Coppola says about those things. I personally don't feel that the film's critical of the Japanese I just think she is showing Lost in Translation and what Lost in Translation truly is and there's many different ways to look at Lost in Translation and you need to focus in your studies not just on the language differences between the characters but also those cultural differences and we can examine the cultural blurs that occur in modern society so what is Japan? We're here looking at post-World War Japan. Post-World War Japan was a country on the move, highly regarded, highly modernized and very very focused on being the best. They had manufacturing down pat, they were the world powerhouse at this particular time, especially through the 70s and the early 80s. Their economy was booming and they began to adopt many Western ideas. Part of this was because after the Americans won the war they didn't invade Japan as such but Americans were left there to monitor things and they integrated much of American culture and things like baseball became very very popular where it wasn't certainly not popular at all before the war and so much of the Americanisms that are picked up come through in the film and these Americanisms are not just cultural ones like film, uh, music and all those sorts of things but mannerisms, ways of dress we can see that in one example when Bill Murray is filming his advert. It's a very Western setting. He's in a study and it's a nice link to the study that his wife's trying to get to him and portray for him in the movie where she keeps sending him those stupid faxes about where he wants the shelves and what colour carpet he wants. And it's a nice link between those two ideas. Also when we, we look at those cultural things and we look at what's happening and, and, the, and the blurring of cultures, we need to think very much about the concept of globalization and now I study I know our study is looking at what happens in those areas but it's also very important to think about not the effect on whole cultures not just individuals and I think that's what this film does and we see those 
the cultural differences affect individuals and the way individuals perceive those cultural differences is very important. And that's certainly what we need to focus on. What else can we do? Japan, I suppose, has synth synthesized many, many worlds. And in many ways, it's, it's a synthesis of, as I was talking about, the American or Westernized culture and Japanese traditions. And we see, in, in, especially in the young people in the film, they are very Westernized. But they've adapted that in a certain Japanese way. And so those cultural boundaries and cultural differences are very clear and focused in that particular way. What else do we need to look at? What's important for our study of Lost in Translation is that we also need to look at what's a film. And we need to think about when we look at it, it's not just a narrative. We need to examine the film techniques, how the film's put together, all the ideas of film, what sort of shots being used, why it's being used. And as we go through our study of the film, we'll be looking at particular aspects. What's the purpose of the close-up? What's the purpose? What's she trying to say? What is Coppola trying to do? How does that show us how it's lost in translation? And so, of course, a lot of those nighttime running scenes through the neon of Tokyo and all those sorts of things with the long shots and the long wide shots are very, very important in establishing setting. And of course, as usual, we'll talk about how close-ups are used for to show emotion. But we'll get to that later in their more specific studies of definite characters and very specific characters. So what's the film about? Really, basically, in a basic sense, it's about a man, Bob Harris, who comes to Tokyo. He's a fading American movie star. He's come to do an ad because it pays very well. He's getting $2 million to do the adverts for Suntory Whiskey. His career's on the fade. Himself, he seems lost in himself and lost with his own world. And we'll go into that when I do the video on his particular characteristics. But he meets Charlotte there. Um, they have a relationship. One feels that it's going to be a sexual relationship, but it's never consummated. And I think that's very important. And that scene we're on the bed together with the overhead crane shot is very important. And we'll talk about that in great detail later on. Specifically, though, they never do have that sexual relationship and they both go away. And what Coppola does more importantly in the film is, is tell the narrative of their story and their own personal searches for being lost. You know, as Charlotte says in the movie, I don't know what I'm supposed to be. And I think that search is very important and that search is what makes the movie as such. And the fact that they don't consummate the relationship is, is a very um, anticlimactic moment and one that the audience not necessarily doesn't expect but is, is left wondering why. And certainly Coppola leaves a lot to the audience's imagination, which is what a great filmmaker truly does. And the, the comment at the end that Bill Murray whispers in Charlotte's ear, sorry, Bob Harris, as Bill Murray, whispers in Charlotte's ear as, as he goes, is very important. And if you want to know what those words are, you can certainly look them up on the internet. People have digitally enhanced that scene. And I don't think it's what he says so much as that's the conclusion to the film and it's very important that it's left open-ended in that way and we see charlotte walk off happy bill murray walks off happy despite the fact that they're lost in many ways and i think there's some resolution there but not enough to dampen the audience's enthusiasm for the mystery behind the movie that's basically what the film is about that relationship and, and why those people are lost and, and that of course talks about western society and global and globalization and where people stand as individuals in the world finding their own way so we need to think about that in terms of navigating the global globalization where these people fit what they're doing and what they understand we've talked previously when we looked at um, globalization and, and cultural change in the world about that cultural blur that exists in the world now between there's no definite individual states and there are aspects of culture that of course are still individualized and still very particular to certain places but in general there's a great cultural blur in the world and the internet's only exacerbated that cultural blur we need to think about the effect of that not only on cultures themselves and groups of people but on individual characters and that's where the study for this lost in translation will basically focus upon and we'll see which characters handle those things better and handle the changing world and handle their own changing relationships in many ways. So we need to think about what Lost in Translation really is saying about what we think about the world, how are these people living in the world, how do they see the world. So basically that's where our study is going to take us. 
this brief overview of Lost in Translation gives you starting points to think about when you watch the film. It's probably best to have those ideas in mind before you watch the film so you can focus your thoughts and studies. You'll need to at least watch the film two, three or four times, get some quotes, listen to your techniques, develop those ideas very carefully and then you'll be able to come to terms with it on a, on a sense that you understand what's happening and you work out what those characters are. As a young person studying the film you may not understand the middle-aged angst of Bob, you may not understand Charlotte's particular sense of why she feels lost in the world, but you need to be able to try and relate to those things and understand that it's happening on a global scale and it's how individuals relate to those things and all the characters relate in different ways and we'll talk about that as well. That's probably all you need to know before you begin your study of Lost in Translation and watch the film. Thank you very much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to help us out and press the like button down below. Visit the website taleducationcenter.com.au for more information on Lost in Translation and some detailed lecture notes and lecture notes in other subject areas. Thanks for your time and goodbye.